Hi, I'm Aaron of Living Science Videos. If you take a hike in the woods, be sure to stop for a moment and observe the life that's all around you. Now, if you're inclined to miss the forest for the trees, then maybe the first thing you'll notice are the things that visibly move. Birds, rabbits, deer, squirrels, and thousands of mosquitoes and spiders all over everything. Maybe a camouflage snake in the grass, hoping that I don't see it. When you think about it, the forest is full of life. And many of these things move so slowly that you can't notice them. These trees, for example, and all of these plants around me, they're all growing right before your eyes. But they're on a different time scale than we are, so we don't notice them. These vines are using their growth to ever slowly work up this tree, eventually strangling the tree and blocking out its sunlight. Why do plants compete for sunlight? Well, they need sunlight in order to make the energy they need to move and grow and maintain homeostasis. It's a process called photosynthesis, where cells use sunlight to make their own food. Plants aren't the only organisms that use photosynthesis this way. If you look very closely into a drop of water using a microscope, you may see unicellular life forms that use photosynthesis too, like cyanobacteria. Plants are autotrophs. They get their energy direct from the sun, which we can't do. And then they convert or transform that radiant energy into a sort of chemical energy in the form of glucose, which is a type of sugar. And we can absorb that only by eating them. Heterotrophs have to eat other organisms just to stay alive. But these guys don't have to kill anything else. They can make their own food. Plants transfer energy that has traveled some 93 million miles through space. The original source of energy for every organism on the planet is the sun. There are two different types of organisms based on whether they make their own food or obtain food from some other source. Autotrophs, or producers, make their own food using energy from the sun and carbon dioxide gas. Heterotrophs, or consumers, cannot make their own food. That's why they're called consumers. They have to consume other organisms in order to stay alive. That's a grim fact of biology for whatever organisms that are being consumed in the process, unless they're able to freely share that energy, like the plants that bear fruit, for example. The cool thing about plants is that they make their own food without consuming other organisms. Well, most of them anyway, but even the ones that do eat don't have to. You're not going to starve a Venus flytrap if you don't feed it. Conversely, wild strawberries aren't as innocent as they look. They can quickly take over your garden or lawn, leaving little space for other plants to get sunlight. They are sometimes eradicated as pests or weeds. There are some plants that kill incidentally, like these vines growing up this tree. This person is saving the life of a tree by removing a vine that would eventually grow to strangle the tree while blocking its access to the sun. This again shows how important the sun is to plants because vines compete so aggressively for sunlight. Plant structures like leaves are highly adapted to capturing sunlight. They're like solar panels because they are. Plants are literally solar powered. Stomata in the bottom of the leaves have tiny holes that allow the plant to get the carbon dioxide it needs to make its food with sunlight. Stomata also allows water to get inside, which is also an important part of the photosynthesis process. Most of the water is absorbed by the roots of the plant. Leaves have different shapes that help them capture sunlight the best for their location. A broad leaf can capture more sunlight, but it also absorbs more heat or thermal energy. So broad leaves work the best in shadier areas, and smaller leaves work better where there is more direct sunlight, like a treetop. What about thin needles then? Needles lose less water to evaporation and are a great strategy for drier areas. The leaves are where food is made for a plant. You may have noticed how green a forest is with leaves. That's because it reflects the green color of the visible light spectrum, like a rainbow. It has colors that are visible to us and also some we can't see, like infrared and ultraviolet. Now, time for a cool, mind-blowing science experiment. In 1800, the scientist Sir Frederick William Herschel set out to measure the temperatures in the visible light spectrum, using a prism to break the colors of sunlight that normally blend into white light into a full rainbow. He used a the thermometer to measure every color, and he had another set outside of that to use as a control. But he noticed that the highest temperature was the control. It was next to the color band, but outside it, where he couldn't see any color at all. 
so he had discovered the invisible color of infrared. Light is a form of radiation including x-rays and radio waves. Now you use an infrared beam to change the channels using a remote. And some snakes, like pit vipers, can detect infrared radiation, the heat emitted by their prey, using sensor pits in the sides of their faces. The visible light spectrum we see is a narrow band of waves in the electromagnetic spectrum. Infrared and ultraviolet are on that spectrum too. Bees and butterflies can see ultraviolet patterns on leaves that we can't see, and they use that to guide them to pollinate the plant. They've co-evolved with plants to see a color that is invisible to most other organisms. The plant evolved ultraviolet patterns that attract pollinators. Back to the visible light spectrum, why is it that the main color of forest is green, of all the colors in sunlight that we can see? That's no coincidence. Green happens to be the color of sunlight that is not used by photosynthesis in green plants. Green plants maximize the colors blue, violet, and red. Were these plants to absorb all the colors, then perhaps they would be much darker, perhaps black. However, it is hypothesized that green plants don't use all the colors because there would be an increase in heat absorption, like wearing black on a summer day. Green leaves contain the chemical chlorophyll, which is used in the process of photosynthesis to make food. There are two stages the plant goes through to make this food. The substances of carbon dioxide and water join the light energy inside the leaves in an organelle called chloroplast. However, heterotrophs like us breathe out carbon dioxide as a waste product of our cellular respiration to convert energy and power our processes. The chloroplast is very much like mitochondria in that they both produce usable energy and they're also both endosymbiotic bacterium. Except that chemical reactions happen in the chloroplast that store energy in the form of the sugar molecule glucose. In the first stage of photosynthesis, light energy is captured in chlorophyll, where it is converted to a form that is used in the second stage of the process. Also, water inside the chloroplast is split into hydrogen and oxygen. The oxygen is then released through the stomata and the leaves as a waste product. Many heterotrophs, like us, use that oxygen to release energy in cellular respiration. And rather than making glucose like plants do to store their energy, we consume other organisms such as plants and break them down into glucose. Autotrophs use stage 2 in photosynthesis to make glucose out of rearranging the atoms in carbon dioxide and water with the help of energy from sunlight. The product is glucose and oxygen. Autotrophs don't use the oxygen, and other organisms had to quickly adapt to all the oxygen they released. If you look at a chemical equation of photosynthesis, the reactants go into the process and a chemical reaction occurs that makes the products. Six carbon dioxide and six water molecules produce a product of glucose and six oxygen pairs. We heterotrophs use essentially the same chemical formula they do, but our cellular respiration does it in reverse. Like the bees that have evolved to see the electromagnetic spectrum that plants display in their leaves, we heterotrophs have co-evolved with autotrophs to use the energy they produce. It's like a symphony of light and chemistry, except that they can live without us, and we can't live without them. Mm -hmm.